Hello everyone, welcome. So this is just a short video to go over kind of the basic workflow from going from sketch um, to principle and kind of how to take these uh, prototypes that you laid out, design and sketch, and then how to actually make them interactive and then do native prototyping and be able to actually um, test out this app and this idea on your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever your mobile device is. So to start off, I have a, um, a basic sort of really poorly designed app here called Botfighter 2.0. Uh, the basic idea is that there's, um, there's three different robots, um, there's Woodbot, there is the Terminator, and then there's also Cardboard Bot. And then within the app, people are able to select different bots that they want to battle. They're able to battle those bots, and then there's a, um, a winner that's generated as well. Um, additionally, they're able to go and check out the bot rankings and then see where these different bots stand in terms of their history and how many times they've won or lost. It's, um, it's totally crazy and silly, but it will work for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, and it's, you know, it's very rough out here. I have like the general basic idea of what it's going to do, where the buttons are going to be, but I spent basically no time in terms of, you know, choosing my colors and, and really designing this out. And, and that's because, um, this is the reason why I'm kind of, you know, you want to jump over to a tool like principle from sketch is that so you can prototype out your ideas you want to be able to test your ideas and it's not in your best interest for you to completely fully finish you know the app design absolutely everything make it perfect test it out and then only then you realize that it doesn't work well that these sort of interactions that you had in your mind just just really don't work and that people want to use it in a different way that people instinctually want to you know press in places they want features that don't exist or they don't care about features you put in there um, so basically I got the app to a close enough version where it will generally be doing what, what you know, this, this, this app will, will finally do. Um, but I didn't waste time to make it perfect just in case things are changed. Um, so anyway, so this is Sketch, you know, you have all, all of my different artboards here. I'm all good to go. And then I'm just going to save this. And then uh, we're going to open up Principle right here. And uh, with Principle, we can just kind of press this import button. And then it will automatically link up with Sketch. And it will grab whichever project in Sketch you saved most recently. And by default, it will import that in. So if you, if you do have multiple Sketch programs, you just have to make sure that you open up whichever one you want to prototype and that you save it so it's the most recently saved one. And then you'll be able to import it in Principle. Um, right here, the times one, times two, times three, that's primarily used if you have like a, a retina display, basically. Um, when designing for a retina display, um, every pixel, you only design, uh, your design is basically split between four pixels and then the the hardware on the iPhone or the Mac will actually then smooth it out and distribute your designs in between the four pixels that are contained within a natural pixel. So basically you want to choose times two if you have a retina device, but I don't. This is an iPad app and I just have a normal vanilla iPad so I'm going to keep it with um, times one here. And then click the import button, it'll take you know, a second or two, not very long, and it'll go through my outboards, it'll grab the them and it will import them into principle here. And it's taking a little bit longer than usual because I'm recording, you know, quick time in the background, but normally this is a pretty instantaneous process. Um, once that's done, then we have all of the different apps, I mean, uh, the different artboards that are from our app. I can use command minus to zoom out and get a better view of what's going on here. And then um, right here is our, our sort of our, our mirrors, our um, virtual machine that is running this app. And you can see that, you know, now nothing does anything. It, it's static. Um, it's non-interactive, right? Um, now, it's actually really super easy to start linking these things together and start to create interactions um, for our app. So this is our, our home page. This is sort of what will open up once you open the Botfighter 2.0 app. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make it so that people can look at the bot rankings. And I want to make it sure make, make it so this bot rankings button will link to this bot rankings page. Um, so there's a, that little lightning bolt that appears on the side of any element whenever you click any element with within um, prototype and you can see it pulled these directly from sketch it's the same sort of layout and organizational structure you had in sketch and you can have access to any of your objects um, from sketch 
So, um, so yeah, so let's go to the bot rankings. I can click on it either over here in this toolbar, or I can click on it directly. And then I'm just gonna click on this, and this gives me the basic sort of fundamental interactions that I can use. Tap, long press, scroll begin, drag begin, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for most of these initial linkages, we're just gonna care about tap. So I'm, and you can actually simply just sort of drag it over and you can see um, on my cursor there it says tap below it, and tap will be the default that it, that it will give you. And then I just need to bring it over to the artboard I want to link to and then release. And you can see it gave me this sort of um, this information up here as well as a bunch of different um, what it's actually doing when it's transitioning. And this is a, a timeline here and then we can adjust the way that it um, basically transitions to this new page. Um, we'll cover that in a later video. This is more about sort of the super basics and just getting these, these different artboards linked up. Uh, fantastic. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to make it so people can actually fight the bots. So when they do that, it'll take them to the select bots page where they can scroll over to different bots and then select them. So I have that linked up. Um, another thing I want to do is, is I want to make it so, and it shows the three bots that are available um, in the program right here. I also want to make it so that you know, if they do a long press, if they hold their finger down on that bot, then it brings up a little bit of information about what it actually does, right? Um, so in order to do that, I can click on the lightning bolt, and then I can just drag from the long press um, bubble right there. And then I'll drag that over to um, cardboard bot. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one, sorry. That is wood bot, I'll drag it over. Bam, there's wood bot, release. Um, and then let's do the same for cardboard bot. So I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna hold the long press bubble, I'm gonna drag that over, I'm gonna release it on cardboard bot. And then last we'll do it on the uh, Terminator here for long press over, and then we have the Terminator. All right, great, fantastic. Now um, let's, um, let's test that out. So if we click the mirror button right here, then if I had my iPad connected, then it would actually um, open up principal mirror on the iPad. I'll be able to natively prototype it on the iPad. Um, because you can't really see that, instead we're going to use this sort of um, this interactive um, virtual machine right here instead. Now let's see. If I click on bot rankings, bam, it goes to the bot rankings page. And then I can click on any of my artboards here to sort of manually bring it back to a certain location. I'm going to click briefly on WoodBot, nothing happens, but if I hold it down, bam, it brings me to WoodBot and then I have information about them. Great. Let's close that out and then let's go to the select bots. Um, so we want to make it so if they click the back, back button and select bots, we'll bring them back to BotFinder. We want to make it so um, when they start, press the start button, it will actually go, they will battle and I'll tell them who the winner is. Now this app is sort of rigged. Um, and every single time, um, the Terminator will win for uh, obvious reasons. So we'll, we'll map this up to the Terminator win card right here. And then um, we'll do that. Now the other thing is you can see that I have these sort of um, these symbols that extend out beyond my artboard here. Um, and I want to make it so that people are able to scroll past these. They're able to go and then kind of see what the different bots are. And then whatever bots are, are left in this sort of view area right here will be the ones that will end up fighting, right? Um, so in order to do that, it's actually really easy. You can go down here to um, horizontal and vertical, and those are two different types of scrolling. So we want horizontal scroll. We'll change this down to scroll. And then um, we'll do the same for this one down here. We'll change it to scroll. All right, so let's test this out. So I'm holding down. You can see it's sort of snapping back, right? Like I can't get past Terminator. I, I can't get to um, Cardboard Bot. So, and it's the same thing with this one. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's letting me move it to the side, but it's just snapping back. And the reason why it's doing that is we actually need to make it so that these um, symbols right here are actually the same size as the area that we are gonna be displaying the scroll content. So if we move those back down here, and then now test it out, then it'll allow us to actually scroll around and choose the different bots. All right, cool, pretty awesome. And then now if I click, so let's say that I have cardboard bot and the Terminator start, oh, well, the Terminator wins, surprise, surprise. Um, and then you can see that we haven't implemented any functionality here. So let's, um, let's go and add a little bit of a functionality to this winner card. I'm going to command minus to zoom out. 
Then we'll take the select button, which will bring us back to the bot select page. We'll just drag because we want that to be a regular tap, release. Um, and then for the rematch button, we want them um, to basically refight again without having to reselect the bot. So, um, but because of the way that our, our app is structured, Terminator will always be the winner. So what we can do is we can drag this out and actually drag it back into itself. And what principal will do is it'll make a copy of um, that card, which it will then go to. Um, and then one last thing, let's, let's maybe, let's take, you know, this picture of the Terminator, let's make this um, scrollable. So we'll change that to scroll, we'll change this to scroll, and then we'll do the same for this one as well. And I could have selected both of those elements um, using shift and then applied the, um, the same behavior on both of them. It would have been a little bit faster, but, you know, um, it is what it is. Now let's, uh, let's test this out. We'll go up to this card. And then now we're able to kind of scroll around the Terminator's portrait, which is, you know, kind of weird. Who cares? Maybe it's not the best interaction, but hey, we can do it. And in, in this case, we actually do want to have that snap behavior. We want it to kind of go back to where it was instead of um, staying sort of off in the corner or something like that. And we'll click rematch. And it doesn't really look like anything happened, right? Because it is the same image. Um, so we will have to um, basically fiddle around with the specifics of how it's transitioning over. You can see that there's nothing here because all properties are identical. Um, and we'll go over this in, in a later video. Um, you can also notice that, you know, once we're on this card, we don't have, oh, so we, we oh yeah. So uh, we actually do have the same um, um, interactions for this card because it was a copy of the original one. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, so, so let's, let's just do all these cards. Let's make sure that all these interactions are, are working and that this is this app is actually doing what it should be doing. So we've got a cardboard bot, and then this one's pretty simple. Just for the back button, we want to go back to the bot rankings. Or actually, on, on second thought, instead of going because there's two different ways we can get to the cardboard bot, we can hold down on uh, one of these bots, then it will bring up the card that has information on it, which I'm doing right now, just doing regular drags. The same thing here. So right now, this this cardboard bot um, artboard can be achieved by either long tapping on the little icon at the home screen or by clicking on him or tapping on him under the bot rankings page. However, we only have one back button. So the question is, do we want the back to go to bot rankings or do we want the back to go to the main screen? Um, so I don't know. That's something that that's something that we have to basically try both and prototype in the real world and, and see what makes the most sense. Um, I think for now we're going to go back to what I originally did. Same thing for Woodbot. We'll go back to the bot rankings. We'll do the same thing for Terminator. Um, we'll go back to the bot rankings here. Fantastic, and then I, th and then the last thing is we do have some text um, down here that is held inside of these um, these areas. So um, let's see. So it's, so we have the info card. It'll be easier for me to directly select it there. There we have our text, um, and then so we want to have this so so vertical scroll. So we want to have it so that people can actually scroll this down and read the rest about what it has to say about it. And we'll do the same thing for Woodbot here. And again, sometimes it's a little tricky to kind of click through and get to the element you want. And it may make more sense to use this side toolbar right here. So the side toolbar, I'm able to easily select it. We'll go down and scroll right here. We'll go over and we'll do the same thing for the text for the Terminator. So we have Terminator bio card, info card, Terminator's real text. <laughs> and then we'll change that so that it has a um, vertical scroll option. All right, fantastic. And let's go back to the main page here and let's sort of test it out on our virtual, oops. I missed my click there. We'll click on this, and then um, let's see. There it is. We'll make this a little bit bigger. All right, we'll test it out. Cool. So bot rankings, okay. And then we can see a Terminator has uh, you know 20 million wins. Uh, Woodbot has five. Cardboard bot has two. Let's say we want to know more about car cardboard bot. All right, brings kind of the information about him, and then I'm able to scroll. And I can see that our text is actually missing, right? It's, it's being cut off by the, um, 
uh, by the rectangle that is encapsulating it. Yes, we can scroll up and down, but it's actually cutting off that text. So that's incorrect. That's something that we'll have to go into sketch and then change the way that that text is masked and, and interacts with the rectangle to make sure it's not physically cut off, but is basically um, is continuous and then we're able to scroll up and down through it. So that's something we'll have to fix in sketch and we'll do that in a later video. We'll press back. Let's say we want to check out Woodbot. And we have this sort of the same issue here. Terminator, same issue, but we have all that scrolling working. We'll press back. Oh, and it looks like we, we forgot a, uh, a linkage here. So we'll, we'll close this out for now. Um, or we won't close it out. We'll just move it off to the side here. It will have this kind of constantly be opening oh, or constantly be open for you as reference. Um, which is good. We'll go to um, Terminator here. So here's the back button and then nice and easy. We'll just drag back to bot rankings. All right. And then instantaneously this updates. Oh. Let's go back to bot rankings. And then, bam, it instantaneously updates there. I don't know what happened the first time. All right, we'll press back again. Oh, we have another back button that's missing. So from bot rankings, we, we do want to go directly back to the main app page. We'll drag, drop, and then that should be instantly updated. Hit back. Now if I click a single time on any of these, nothing happens. If I do an extended click, it'll bring me back to that car cardboard bot page and then I can further scroll through the different bots. All right. And then um, let's say we want to do a bot fight. We want to have it be the cardboard bot against Woodbot. We'll start. Oh, too bad. Terminator won anyways. <laughs> um, now sort of reset. So, so yeah, so I mean, there's definitely issues in terms of our interaction. And um, in later videos, we're going to go more in depth as to how to actually make these things uh, behave in the way that you want instead of instead of just simply go and transition to each other. Um, additionally, we're going to go through, we're going to look to see what's happening with the text and figure out what we have to do in Sketch in order to, um, to change that and make that work better. Um, all right. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully this is helpful. This is just the super basics of just how to get up and running and get something happening um, in the workflow of Sketch and Principle. And then the later videos will cover um, how to actually make something that interacts in a pleasing way and hopefully, you know, um, looks better than this. All right. Well, thanks for watching.